So I've been using Docker a lot lately for my projects, specifically for using it on the back end, and I wanted to show everyone how I do that. So I'm gonna be using an example here. I'm usually using a GraphQL server and using TypeScript, but this is gonna work even if you're using a non-GraphQL server or you're just using JavaScript. So I'm gonna be using this particular GitHub repo, my Stripe series or my Stripe server, and I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna put it into a Docker container and I'm just gonna run it locally for now. So let's get into it. Um, right here I have the project up and running and we're gonna be filling out the Docker file. So in my server file over here, I create a new folder or new file called Docker file. Um, and then we're gonna put some stuff in it. Now I'm gonna assume you already have Docker installed because we're gonna be using that to run this um, and build this. Um, but this is basically where we put all our logic for Docker and we're gonna tell it what to do. Now before I get too deep into that, I just wanna do a quick note that in my ORM config over here, I just made it so my entities were star over here. Um, before it was star.ts, which would only work for TypeScript. And when I compile the server, I wanna make sure that it works, gets the JavaScript files. And then I also just added a build command so it does TypeScript to build the code. And that's pretty much it, changes I made. Let's go over the Docker file here. So I tend to really like following this guide right here. Um, this is just from the official Node.js organization, and I'll link it below if you wanna see this whole example here. I kinda just use this as my starter whenever I'm starting a Node.js uh, project, and I wanna do uh, make that into a Docker container, Docker image. So what this does is it starts from a instance that has Node installed on it, and in this case, it's doing Node 8. I'm just gonna say Node so I get the latest version. Um, and then here we specify a app directory. I'm gonna get rid of source so I don't have too many source directories and just say user app, but you can pretty much create the path that you want it to be. Um, and then here, as it talks about, uh, this uh, takes in both, this copies package.json and also if you have a package lock. In this case, I don't have a package lock, um, so it doesn't matter, but we're just copying this into our Docker uh, image, and then we are running npm install. Uh, and then we're copying everything into this container. So we're gonna actually change this up a little bit to work for our scenario here. Um, so it starts right here. So this copy dot dot, we're copying all our stuff into the Docker container. But the problem with this is this gets everything. And for example, I might have a dist directory. In this case I do. So like if I just run yarn build, um, locally, it's going to create a dist directory and I'm going to have node modules and I don't want to be putting that stuff in my Docker container and cluttering it. So you can create what's called a dot docker ignore file. It's kind of like a dot git ignore and I put dist and node modules in there and you can include anything that you don't want to be copied to your Docker container. Um, you can also just specify exactly what you want to copy over instead of just copying everything if you want to. Um, and then after that, after we copy this over, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna build the code. So right now it's in TypeScript and I wanna turn it into JavaScript. So I'm gonna start by just saying run npm run build. So whenever I wanna run a command, I can just say the run command from Docker and then say what I wanna run. Uh, so we have npm run build there. That's gonna create a dist directory and here's what the structure of mine looks like. So I have a dist and then I have a source folder in there and then I have all my JavaScript code compiled. So that's what that's gonna look like when it builds. Now, uh, some people don't always get that when they uh, do a yarn build or a TypeScript build. Uh, make sure you have a root directory. I'm currently set it to, the, to the, the current directory here and it will add that source folder in there. Uh, all right, so after I build this, I wanna run my code now and also I forgot to mention, this is actually not the most efficient way to build the image and then run the image. There's this thing called multi-stage builds in Docker, which I'm actually gonna cover in a separate video to make this a little bit more efficient. So stay tuned for that. But after we build this image, uh, there's gonna be a few files that I need because I wanna run it from this dist directory over here. Um, and to do that, I need to copy over some files. For example, the orm config, and maybe I wanna move over my environments file. So I'm gonna say copy, and I'm gonna grab orm config, and uh, let's take off caps, 
and I'm going to put it in the dist directory. So there we go. And I'm also going to do the same thing with the environment file, so .env. And then after that, I want to just change my working directory. And I want to set the working directory to the dist file there. So I'm just going to say, or dist folder, I mean. Uh, and then after that, uh, you can pick the port to expose. For us, it's going to be port 4000. That's just where it starts up. And then the command here is how you want to start up. So it's better to use node directly. So I'm going to say node and then say source slash index.js. So what that's going to do is I'm going to be in this directory when I'm doing stuff. So I'm going to say source index.js. So what this does is it kind of makes our Docker container. And just to recap what we're doing, so we're starting from node, we're setting our working directory, copying over the package.json. And for those of you that uh, haven't seen this before, you may be wondering why we have this copy package.json here um, when we just copy it again here, right? Because this copies everything, so it's going to copy the package.json over again. Why did we put copy up here? Uh, and the reason for that is actually just for caching. So Docker caches things. So when we build multiple times, and we're going to see what it means to build in a second, uh, the reason we uh, it's going to cache this command here separately, then it's going to cache this command. So uh, if we don't change anything in our package.json, we don't want to have to do an npm install every time because that takes extra time. And you'll notice I didn't use the production flag because I want to install the dev dependencies uh, so that way I can build it with TypeScript. And that's what I'm talking about, where we're installing a few dependencies. We don't really need the dev dependencies. But all right, so this is our Docker file, and our Docker file looks good. I'm ready to start running this now, right? Um, so to do that, I can say docker build. And how it works is we say dash t to specify that we want to give it a tag. And here you give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to say stripe example. And then I say dot. And that means I'm doing the current directory. So it's going to see that I have a Docker file in the current directory because I'm in the server folder, server folder. So let's go ahead and run that. And it's going to build our, 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 our image here. So it's going to take the commands that we have in our Docker file and it's going to run them. And it's going to build what's called a Docker image. And then we can take that Docker image and we can run it. All right. So, and you can see uh, here we can, it has some little hashes using those to cache. Um, so now I can say docker run and I can pick a port um, and then I can run it. So I'm going to say here the name of my image is stripe example and then I use the dash p flag. So how the dash p flag works is if I just say docker run, nothing much is going to happen. I want to be able to access it from my computer. This So I'm going to say dash p and I can specify which port I want to access it on my computer. So for example, maybe I want to access port 8001 on my computer, This, and I want to uh, then specify how do I access it from the Docker container. So from the Docker container, we're exposing port 4000, and in my index.ts over here, we're using port 4000. So in my container, port 4000 is what we're using. So we're going to say Docker, whenever I access port 8001, map that to port 4000 in the Docker container. All right, so if I run that, we're going to see what happens. And you notice it says connection refused, and it just crashes out. Uh, the reason for that is I'm trying to connect to a PostgreSQL database. Uh, and basically, because it's in a Docker instance um, or Docker container, it can't access it um, because I have the host set to local host here. And basically, it does not work. So how can we get around that? Well, one way is to actually just have PostgreSQL running as a, another container and you can access it using uh, a network and setting up. I like to use, for example, Docker Compose, which I'm going to cover in a future video is how to do that. But for now, I just want to use the PostgreSQL that I have running on my computer. How can I do that? Um, so to do that, uh, there is a nice stack overflow about it. Uh, the latest thing that you can do is instead of using localhost is to use the host.docker.internal. So this is something that Docker lets you use to access localhost. So inside a Docker container, that's equal pretty much to localhost if I was running this not in a Docker container. So if I change that, and particularly I'm saying how to connect to the database in the ORM config, so I'm changing that there. So I change my host to that. Um, I can now run my example again, and we get the same result, right? What happened there? How come it's not working? 
Well, it's because we never built it. So every time you build it, well, if you don't build it again, you're not gonna get the latest code. So here we're gonna say Docker uh, build, um, and you'll notice it's actually gonna run quite quickly um, and finish everything. And you'll notice it didn't really run the NPM install there because it cached it. So that was one of the advantages that we had before, and it ran a little faster because of that. So we rebuilt it, and pretty much whenever you make a change, you're gonna rebuild the Docker image, and then you can run it again. All right, so let's try running this again. Um, and now we can see its server started up. Now it's telling me it started up at 4,000, but this is coming from inside the container. I know that I can access it from 8,001. So here I'm at localhost. If I refresh, can't access it on 4,000 because that's in the container. But if I change it to 8,001, I can see GraphQL playground and I can access stuff here. I can see my schema. And if we wanted to, we could confirm it works by running a mutation here. So let's go ahead and create an email and a password, uh, a bad one at that, uh, and run that. And we can see we register and it gets true. Uh, so there you go. That is how we can make a Docker file. So in this case, we were making a Docker file for uh, Node.js, and this was a TypeScript example. But really, if you were not using TypeScript, you can just skip this build step here. Um, and then you'd still, and you could really uh, skip this bit pretty much this whole bit right here is the typescript part so we can say for typescript and now we can actually make this better by using multi-stage builds in docker and we're going to basically ship this outside of our container or at least particularly this bit um, and so we don't have dev dependencies in our docker container making it a little bit smaller but anyway that's it for this video guys thanks for watching